just sitting here naked. I jumped out real quick. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the right. I'm here with the boys, PD and Cal. Say what's up, guys. What's up? And Ready to rock. We're talking about the man himself. Who are we talking about? Huh? The, Bat- the Batman. The Batman. Okay. The, the original show. title of Batman was The Batman. Okay. The, 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 the number one movie in the world. The number one DC movie in the world. The number one superhero movie in the world. The num- there's so many number ones that's breaking, even in this pandemic era, it's just blowing people's minds. Don't uh, goose the people. Let's just get to it, okay? Don't blow smoke up their arse. Let's just get to the actual story. We don't need all that m- malarkey. Uh, Move uh, right uh, along. So I'll uh, bring it on to someone who's, who's objective, just like myself. You know, that it's the number one movie. Petey, can you please go? Because clearly I'm seeing Superman um, um, partisans are already starting to rear their ugly heads. Wow. Oh, man. I know it was a there was an interesting movie. You know, it starts with this, um, you know, it starts with all this heavy um, detective stuff. And from, you know, from my it's been a little while since I've seen it. But coming in, we see Batman and uh, <laughs> Batman coming to a sea of the sea of um, Gotham the police. police. The Batman, please just use the power. Oh, my <laughs> Not just, just when he comes in, you really feel like his presence come into the room, right? Mm-hmm. The way it's shot. And this is one thing I can give for the DC movies, whether it's uh, it's sometimes I'm not with it or not. There's a sort of a feel that you get into these movies. And sometimes you want to have sometimes more of an effect, a tone, uh, a vi- visual sort of feel, something that you would call into like an auteur type theory. And you want to, this, for Batman, he, this is kind of something that he kind of needed, a full-on detective story. Now, with any detective story, you need to get to the end of the story before we figure everything out. So he has to figure out a bunch of little things, and the big things start to elude him because it might be closer to his person, and that's how, that's sort of what we see. So we see there's elements of that. Hmm? I don't think he was eluded. It's just that the guy was just, just daft in his presentation of his um, of his, um, of his um, no, I'm just saying you can't r- reveal the mystery at the beginning. You can't be that great a you know Sherlock sure Holmes. Have to... I, just, I just want to just correct you. Just don't say. It. Oh my God! But no, it's a, it's a you know it's a detective thing where Batman is trying to figure out. They're trying to with Gordon. It's basically the two of them together trying to figure out this um this new this person who's videotaping himself. So it's very much present day type of thing. Obviously people are gonna say it's like Saw, he's sending these videos out. But this Saw has Saw has a thing where they keep saying that Saw's committed no crimes. When he of course abducting people, this, that, and the other, and put them in torture chambers is a crime. You can't escape that sort of thing. But this guy, they, they, there's no like sort of redeeming things about this character, this guy. He's doing this stuff, but he's doing it to these politicians right so we're starting to see from early on that these people who are have families this that and the other they've been tied up and stuff is going you know stuff's been going on with them in the past so that's what we start to slowly see right so you know ultimately batman is he's going through this he goes and it's one of the things it's one of those things that they had like a, a mike w bar scene where batman goes to a bar and he has to force his way in and he's fighting and all this stuff and he has some banter at the door that sort of thing it was interesting to see that little bit because that's something in the comics that you see you see mainly with the mike w Barr and um alan davis run of batman the short run but yeah it was, a, it was a very interesting fun movie um there was something in the middle that kind of threw me off as far as the backstory but ultimately Getting through this was um, it was just a fun movie. It's long. I was really surprised that when it got, the, I only knew it was long because I had to go to the bathroom. But otherwise, I really enjoyed it. I didn't have to go to the bathroom, so it wasn't that long. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yo, so Cal, can we hear your bias review, please? What did you say? Can you hear my what? Your bias review. No, no bias review. As the resident detective story, as a resident detective story expert here, I'm going to give a fair and balanced review, unlike your biased Batman bootlick himself. So let's start. First of all, have to agree with what Petey said. This is definitely a movie in terms of for Batman. This is definitely effect, both good and bad for DC movies overall. 
But hey, I guess that's we can say that pretty much almost about every film. The fact that uh, it's standalone and they can really concentrate on that, they don't have to necessarily connect it to anything previous or worry about anything going forward. It exists in its own little pocket universe, if we will. And so they can take a lot of liberties and do a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily uh, work with anything that we've seen before, but definitely works within this film. Now you have the classic detective story where you have the mystery and of course you have the sleuth. My favorite, Sherlock Holmes, of course. And Lupone's not too, you know, Lupone is not too far away. Actually, no, Lupone is distant, is distant away after they did that Netflix series. They ruined that character. But we always start off with what? You got the mystery, okay? And then you have the sleuth and he's supposed to be gathering all the clues. He usually gets pretty close to it. And then there's some misdirection, okay? He recalibrates and he will catch the guy, but he usually misses something really close to it, really close to the end learns what that is, stops the even bigger plot, a la Moriarty trying to blow up the world or something. And there we have the pretty much same thing. They followed that letter by letter, point by point. I thought they did a very good job of it. Uh, it did feel long at first. I don't know if uh, PD said the same thing. It felt long at first until the action kicked in. By the time I saw the Batmobile, you know, time was suspended at that point. I was just totally invested in the story. But there were certain things that were needed to, in, in terms of establishing this Batman the Batman, if you will. You know, they needed more time. I mean, you can't have those scenes of him walking slowly out of the darkness to go beat up people if you're concerned about time. You need time for those shots. The same with him going through the cops. Uh, they did a, I like the adversarial nature he has with every cop, with the exception of Commissioner Gordon, even to the point where, you know, they're trying to take off his mask. He's smacking everybody around. And Gordon's like, look, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to let him know what he's I, doing. I just want to point out one fact. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. But it's not Commissioner Gordon. It's just Gordon right now. He's a detective. Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure you didn't put anything incorrectly in your... Isn't he commissioner by the end of the film? He's not commissioner at the beginning. Is he commissioner by the end of the film? I don't know if he is. I, he is. There's nothing I believe he's commissioner by the end of the film. So what you're saying has no bearing on anything that I'm saying. You just, you just, you just, you know. Of course, you just got to jump in, you know, get your own two cents in because you got to be a control freak. Uh, no, Cal, PD. The just, world PD has, PD the world has with had me, enough of dictators. Your all time right, is all right, all right, Lord have mercy. Once again, the innocent are vilified. <laughs> anyway, that great scene they have in the in the jail cell. He's like, I'm going to talk to this guy. Don't worry, I'm going to sort him out. Then he whispers to him, Okay, we got to get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, stuff like that works. Stuff like that works really well. Where Gordon's like, "Look, no, we got to work with this guy. He can really help us. We got a big job over here. This guy's on our side." And at the same time, you know, he still got to keep that liaison with the cops because these guys don't want to look at them. You know how cops are. They look at you. Oh, you're a turncoat. Forget about it. Next to you, Serpico. And so he's able to get him out that way. But that was uh, that really kicked into one of the bigger action action sequences, or at least the start of some action overall with the film. It, it was also very telling that Bruce Wayne has been such an underdeveloped portion of the Batman mythos that they could do this movie and you could all you could do is shrug your shoulders from, you know, from the very first Batman movie in 1989 to this one. Bruce Wayne has been Bruce Wayne has been such a loosely defined character. He's just rich and he loses his parents, you know, at a very young age. And then after that, it's just Batman. I don't know if he spent a total. I don't know if he spent a full 20 minutes as Bruce Wayne in this movie. And this movie is over three hours long. So that is something to definitely, that's done something to definitely consider, at least with the films. You know, the other portion uh, was putting him in this armor where Batman is now effectively bulletproof. He's taking shotgun blasts to the chest and, you know, no, nope, not spitting up any blood or anything of that nature. The best we get is him being unconscious. And I think that there was some like, almost like a, he's like Robocop. He's taking grenades to the face and he's, you know, he's okay, no cuts. No, you know, not a split lip. So I, I look at this whole thing and it's a lot of Superman envy where they, you know, they want Batman to be bulletproof like Superman. And, you know, they would love for him to fly like Superman as well. But, you know, each time they're, they're a little chicken about doing it. Just let him fly if you want to do all that stuff. Why are you putting him in that puffy suit looking like Rocky uh, from Bullwinkle and Rocky so he can just sprawl through the air and then like crash ass first onto the ground? You can't do any better than that. At least in Batman Begins, you know, they, they went for it. And it plays with the whole idea of him being a bat. So, you know, yeah, they would love for him to fly. They'll keep testing it to see what they feel they can get away with. You know, a little Superman envy right there. But aside of that, I thought it was a, I thought it was a very, very good movie. Really strong story. Great performances turned in by just about everyone. Though, 
I've heard some criticisms about the film and I can't say I disagree. I can't say I disagree with them. Uh, the Batman character that I was introduced to as a kid would have never been, would have never been shot with a shotgun, let alone been anywhere near a gun because he would have snuck up on everybody. Karate chopped him from behind. You know, he was a master martial artist. He didn't need to have all that extra gear. He, he was, uh, he was sleek. It was top. It was cutting edge technology, you know, less about, uh, he, he really played on the whole fear. He'd have guys shooting at each other before they would ever shoot at him. But that's the comic character, which has seeded a lot to what people have found very interesting and uh, very, very enjoyable and entertaining in terms of the films. But all in all, I thought it was a very, very well done film. Wow, that's a uh, uh, shocking. I, you know, clearly I concur that it was a very good movie for all three of us. I think Matt Reeves as a director did a great job with the film. I think the look, the feel of it. Um, naturally, there are some things that I did have a problem with, but that does not take away from the film in and of itself. I like what? Did, all right, spot on, okay? What did you have a problem with? Oh, I mean, come on. There's, there's just one obvious glaring problem. But I mean, oh, you didn't I mean, like Robert Patterson. You didn't like Robert Patterson in the role. Okay, got it. <laughs> so I'm just saying, uh, it, it, I did not like the portrayal there of uh, Batman that he would, someone who was always talking about his family's legacy would just say, ah, you know what, just screw it. You know, he doesn't want to be Batman. I mean, he doesn't want to, you know, do things for the city. He doesn't want to, uh, um, you know, care about his company. He doesn't want to, I mean, how is he going to be Batman without all these things? I mean, that's like the basis, you know, the responsibilities. But I think that was the whole purpose of the movie. That at the very end, he comes back and says, oh yeah, you know what? I am, I have to be responsible for these things. I have to be involved in these things because if I don't, bad people will end up uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So if that was the goal, that was, that's, that was the story, that's okay. But I just felt that as a, in terms of a, of a Batman himself, he wouldn't have done that because he would have felt. But I mean, there was that point when he did leave for a while. We got that, okay, okay, okay. But I think that he would have been more responsible, especially like I said, most of this tech money is coming from this. And if you don't have it, what are you gonna do? I thought the very fact that you had the, uh, the renewal program, they did change it so that his family was involved in this billion dollar fund. And then since their family was no longer involved, you had everybody jumping into the slush fund and, and using a program that was supposed to help people and it wasn't. Um, like the fact that it helped to set up possible court of owls, you know, with bringing in the old, the old families of, 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 um, of Gotham, the Arkhams, the, um, the Waynes, you know, and how they helped to build the city. I thought that definitely, the very fact that brought in, so like, to me, so I'm like, yeah, finally they're gonna do a Court of Owls movie. I hope, that's what I'm hoping they're gonna do in the future, but it looks good that they put that in. Uh, the, the, I think they're gonna the, do Court of Owls in that Gotham Central TV series. The Gotham Central, I didn't see that, so probably not. But I mean, we're talking about big, we're talking about, you know, the big, the big thing, the whole shebang. No, you're gonna probably get Hush before you get that. And then the, Goth the Gotham Central TV series hasn't debuted yet, but I've seen a list of the characters that they're talking about. So it's more, there's a good chance that you'll see Court of Owls there before you see it in the films. Okay, well, thanks for that. I also like the- Wait, wait, before you go, before you, hey, before you go with that, let me just add in, I think with Robert Patterson, I think they just overdid it with the hair. Cause I've seen him at premieres, his hair is short, it was pulled all, I mean, not to say that his face and his look would be Bruce Wayne for me, but it's just cool out with that hair. Like that hair was too ridiculous. I don't want to knock Robert Pattinson. I'm not going to knock any actor who's trying to interpret a role. In, in that hair, you don't, the, the hair don't have nothing to do with the acting. The but, hair but, doesn't have anything what? to do with the acting. The hair just gave me the feel of um, the vampire movie. All right, let's, let's, let's just call it what it is, all right? I didn't want to go there, but you guys are kind of just throwing it in my face. I, I, I will say again, you know, the role as Batman did it, but he didn't to me, he was no, Bat, no Bruce Wayne. And of course, Cal did make a good point. The film, he wasn't Bruce Wayne. Why? Because he's not strong uh, on that end. But then again, most people want to see Batman, you know, and why Batman is a real persona anyway. You know, well, they wanted, they wanted to do more of the Bruce Wayne that is in the emo Bruce Wayne? stage. Emo huh? Bruce Wayne? That's what they wanted to do? Emo Bruce Wayne? I'm saying, yeah, I know Bruce Wayne. I've read enough comic books to say, like, the idea of this, this, this slight period, because they didn't show it in the... Uh, in the what's the name in year one but the idea behind the dialogue if you hear it in year one it's something that the pros felt that this period before this will turn batman around 25 he's kind of in turmoil trying to figure out how to 
you know, you know, make good on his um, he's sworn to fight, you know, crime, you know, fight against criminals since he was a kid. So he's in this turmoil period where he's trying to figure it out. We only seen it in a couple of glimpses, and we've seen it a little more in like um, zero year. But it's like there's something that they wanted to play. So they're having that cake and eat it too. Where Bruce Wayne is in his early period, so as Batman, he's having the turmoil. But they don't want him without the costume, so it's like kind of having both. Like the same thing you see in Batman. I like to come mm-hmm. a little after I finish my little portion here too. What? Okay, I like to just finish my little. Your portion, portion is a little long. Your portion, portion of the cake long. is a little long. long. I was trying to get to my portion. What, were... what, what with me? What? How many? The four-part question. The four-part answer. So. The next thing I thought Catwoman The was next good. thing Catwoman was a pretty good job. You know, I mean Are you the host or this is a monologue? This is this is not this is a a, 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 a three way show. So continuing, I thought that uh, <laughs> the story was pretty pretty interesting, especially the fact that who her father was, you know, and how that came about. Um surprising, wasn't shocked. I mean pretty pretty I, I didn't think it was she she was gonna pull it off, but I thought the, the actress playing Catwoman did a good job. Now, gentlemen. Comic book influences. What do you think about that? Do you think you know year one, a long Halloween? What do you think in terms of this? In terms of the uh, the, the, the movie? For me, for me, I'm saying I'm not really for doing three, four stories in one, but you know, because you can make one out of maybe not one out of the what's the name Catwoman when in Rome. That's more that's more just a fun sort of story. But um, you know, I think for this one it worked. I think it was didn't feel like it was. I don't. I wouldn't do that. But at the same time, the movie worked on its own, so I got had to give it to him. So when you go back to those stories like Hush or Long Halloween, you're like, well, there's still some story to do, and you don't want to screw the pooch and just say, well, I, I can do all this in one story. When you can see they were trying to hint that, hey, we got some zero year here, but at the same time, there's a little less of that, and this it's more him on the bike him sort of similar to not the actual costume like the costume towards the end of zero year we but it was at the same end of then the sort of destruction of um of um gotham which did take its take its note even though it was in zero year take its note from cataclysm so you know it's one of those things where you can see that's adding another story in there so you have these bits that are ultimately stories on its own now i kind of liked i didn't really like cataclysm so I did like it in um, zero year. So I would say for me, for this, they needed a big thing, even though this was a grounded thing and sort of like the same with the Watchmen and having the space alien come, having something big at towards the end is something that's going to be there for your climax. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not pointing it out as a negative. I'm just saying it kind of worked. Put They put all these things in there. I would say as a, as a filmmaker, I would try to do it one at a time, but they, they did what they had to do. So, what's your take on this, bro? I agree, but I agree so much with that because these guys tend to okay, we're gonna jam, and most of the time it's just the director being greedy. They want to do it before somebody else gets the chance to do it. So this may be the only. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put this in there, and I'm gonna put that in there. And no, you could have told if you just did the long Halloween. That's enough for one film. That's enough for two films. To be quite honest, you could get two parts out of that. Hush is enough for two films if you know if that's what you wanted to do. And Cataclysm is something that you do like much later. That would be like later on if you had like a longer franchise and it's maybe like three, maybe like fourth, fourth film or something of that nature. But a lot of time I, it's just directors being greedy. They got this chance and they, oh, I like these elements. I'm gonna throw as much of this stuff in there as possible. And I'm gonna do it before some other guy gets to do it because this may be the only chance that I have, you know, to to work with this particular character in these stories. And in this case, I mean, you had like Zack Snyder who decided to jam pack a whole bunch of stuff into Batman v Superman, didn't work. You have, you know, you have Matt Reeves who decides to, you know, really sew together the long Halloween, Hush, Cataclysm, Zero Year, maybe one other story that I'm not seeing, but you know, he sews pretty much all them together, but it comes across very seamless. But you know, I, again, these are, but this is where I always think they never get it. You have so much story material to choose from. And if you're going to, I understand they don't want to just directly adapt anything because then, well, one, there's royalties and two, I would like to tell my own story. But there's also the, the acknowledgement that, hey, this is a pretty good thing right here. And if I don't do it, somebody else will do it. 
so let me uh, take let me take up on it because I would love to try my hand at it before somebody else. So you know they put themselves in that particular they put themselves in that particular position. But you know what what Petey's saying is you know correct. You could easily get a really strong film with just one of these storylines, just one. If you were ever if they ever did Nightfall correctly with Bane, that's a two part film easily, easily. But and, you know they, they you know they uh, they choose to do what they do. So Petey. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I've read, Jeff Loeb, I think he was in a class, or probably you said it or someone said it, that he was in a class, his, his writing teacher was Jeff Loeb. And, um, who, you say who was? Matt Reeves. Oh, okay. I know, I didn't say that, but I mean, it's in the here. here. Class with Matt Reeves. What do you think, how do you think that influenced him here? I don't think, I wouldn't say, I mean, those are big storylines. I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't say that Jeff Loeb himself um, influenced, because Jeff Loeb, I think as a comic writer, he's really much the guy that kind of came to prominence in the 90s, who kind of under really took the, the image style and he kind of converted it into the way comics are read now, where you have less dialogue, it's a little more punchier, it has sort of that diehard type feel. And this didn't really have that diehard thing in it. So I wouldn't give it, I think, I think Matt Reeves really, um, took this story and the parts that I had was going to have issue with, which was Catwoman trying to show you how tough Catwoman is they, through Batman. They didn't have to do that because there's parts in um, in, the, in the Batman, the post-crisis Batman mythos is that where they allow Catwoman to get the best of Batman, where she's like kind of tossing him around and stuff like that because he's taken with her. And this is like, he's taken with her, but like she come at him, it's like, it ain't, it ain't happening. So that sort of thing, you know, saying this is my Batman film, I'm establishing him. And then Catman will, so, you know, what she can do, we just showed her breaking in and getting the bank. That's what we want to see first. And then later on, we see that she can fight. That's all we need. You know, next, you know, you put the, the, the Darwin Cook helmet on there, we're, we're money once we get to see that. So I think I, I can't see any influence as far as the way the tone of this, because if you look at, you know, and this is not to insult that, you know, he did Burglar, he had sort of a punchy sort of like writing style, which is kind of like movies. And he was almost perfect for the X-Men, where the, the older writer, the Fabian Ascens and Scott Lobdell kind of leaned towards the um, the Chris Claremont style writing, which they had, a, you know, post the pages, whereas Jeff Loeb said, hey, he'd have the, you know, he had an X-Men Come with me if you want to live. That the uh, the Nate Nate Gray. He'd have these punchy lines which worked. So his style for comics, and I think it was he didn't do as much of that on his later Superman stuff. But like the way he really came to prominence is really giving you that diehard punchline type of um, dialogue. So I can't really see that in this sort of thing. Well, he said Matt Reeves in an interview with Entertainment Weekly said that you know um, Jeff Lowe was his USC screenwriting teacher, and he told mm. him to be a writer. And that he didn't realize that when he was doing a deep dive into Batman, that he wrote The Long Halloween and Dark Victory, and that those are the ones, those are some of the stories that definitely influenced what his work here. Um, interesting. Cal, what's your take on the Riddler? That's not the Riddler. <laughs> that's uh, the, that, that, I don't care what they call, I don't care what they call him, okay? That's not, you know, that's not the Riddler. But that's very similar to what they have with the Joker, where with the except, you know, with, with the uh, when they did Heath, when Heath Ledger did uh, their take on the Joker, and I was like, I'm not sure who that guy is, but it's not the Joker. However, uh, that's closer to oh, uh, that's really not the Riddler. That's closer to like a Calendar Man at the end of the day. Much closer, much closer to that particular character. But it, it worked for the film, and aside of the fact that they they still have this, they still have this shame of comic book of comic book trophies, if you will, uh, costumes, the, certain, the names, uh, the gimmicks and so on and so forth that they use. They, they, they are really, really ashamed of that stuff because instead we get the Riddler looking like, I'm not sure what the hell, but there's a character who wears that type of getup. It's almost like from The Walking Dead, but that's not, you know, that's not the Riddler. The, the Riddler we got to see when Jim Carrey decided to do the character and everybody's like, no, oh, corny, over the top, but that's the character. If you want to modernize him somewhat, what you did over here wasn't necessarily the Riddler. And the fact that he left riddles 
the fact that he left riddles for Batman doesn't make him the Riddler. Uh, uh, if you want to see the Riddler character, go read Hush. Okay, you'll get to see the Riddler. You get to see a very fine rendition of the Riddler character at the end of the day. Or if you want to see the Riddler character at his best, go back, check the Batman 1966 television series and see Frank Gorshin play the Riddler for which he won an Emmy. And you'll get to see and you'll get to see the actual character. This right over here, not the Riddler. Well, I was about to say, if you're going to go on any saying anything without mentioning Frank Gershon, that would be a crime because that is the quintessential comic book villain, if ever. Like his, Petey, his tone. Petey, you know me. You know me. You know me. <laughs> I was about that. to say, I'm like, yeah, Jim Carrey was definitely, he, he brought a lot of fun to it and he brought his own style to it. But the, the thing of it, of having such an actor to be there, understanding the theatrics of the supervillain. And then at the same time, he had the music that worked with him. And then at the same time, he was no match for Batman. Like that was the best part because he'd have this thing where Batman, he wanted to box Batman and he, he magnetized Batman's feet in the TV show. And he was like happy, he started laughing, the music comes on, he goes in there, Batman can't move. When Batman first hits him, he's already hurt. <laughs> And that's the, the thing of this guy who, you know, like um, these dreams of grandeur, when at the same time, the flesh is, is very weak, that sort of thing. So it's one of the things where you, his energy was made him seem bigger than he was. And at the same time, he was really no match. Ultimately, so for time to time, he was kind of a second, a second to the um, to the Joker. So that's why it's kind of tough for people. Like I think at one point, they called him a, a truck and bus version of the of the Joker. So it's like so similar where he does the riddles and that sort of thing. You can see there was some similarity before, but the Joker originally was just a killer. But when they softened them, then you're like saying, well, what's the difference between these two guys? And he was kind of forgotten for a while. And then you see him come back, as you, you said, in uh, Long Halloween. He's got, you know, big play in the, of course, uh, Cat went, Catwoman went in Rome. And then, of course, in Zero, in Zero Year, he gets a really big sort of thing. But that's, that one's still in the tone of the you know like the the guy was kind of confident that sort of thing whereas this yeah it is more going towards a serial killer kind of saw kind of a nut type of thing which is i guess to have him different from the joker but he's really extreme where it's, it'd be fun to play off a regular guy who had all these things rather than um you know someone that's total crazy but i you know i didn't mind it the most the thing that i really mind who i struggled with was martha that was the thing of her backstory her wacky backstory to connect her with Ar Arkham. So, well, that was they, 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 what is it? They decided they're going to besmirch Martha so they can besmirch Thomas Wayne so we can have flawed people and, you know, have that little bit where, like, oh, oh no, you know, is this going to ruin it? Because Batman always thought his parents were these really cool people and now he realizes they're not. And this was the whole reason why he was on this crusade and yada, yada, yada. They got nothing better to do. Well, I don't see why you need to mess with that stuff. It's like when they go up and say, okay, we're going to bring jor back and make him the villain. What for? You know, what for I, I, at the end of the day? That's I, the, I, that is the gestation of these characters. Okay? Yeah, that's, it, just, it just doesn't, for me, it doesn't work. It's so unnecessary. It did nothing for the story overall. And then Alfred tries to smooth it over. It's like, oh, no, once he found out he did this, I'm like, yeah, but he already did the wrong thing. He reached out to some criminal. You can't take that away, and then this guy, and then Batman's over here. I'm going to take out the criminals because that's what they did to my. Uh, that's what they did to my pop. Wait a minute, my pop moved out the criminals. My mom was a nut job. Okay, he's already psychologically unbalanced, running around dressed as a bat. This is going to be helpful. It, it's just not necessary. You don't need to mess with the fundamentals. Just stick with the other stuff you're doing. Just stick with the window dressing. Everybody likes to just push the the the, the thing. But one thing I wanted to bring up, and probably you can answer this one, Cal. Is the fact that the Riddler is that, you know, one of the problems we, I see a lot of times in these movies is always the Joker, the Joker, the Joker. I think Matt Reeves is trying to move out of just that whole Joker, Batman dynamic uh, to include the Riddler, you know, um, probably to bring him more involved, show him as a more important character. Like how, I guess, what was the name of that, 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 that comic with um, when the Riddler and, and, and Joker went to war? You know where they're trying to make that there was some type. The Riddler was not was more than just a, a, a henchman. It was the jokes and riddles, I believe it was called. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, what did you take of that in terms of um, and you too, Petey, 
either one of you can answer that. The very fact that he's trying to just get outside that dynamic. And like you said, he wants to do his own thing. I don't cool. think that I don't think that was portrayed in this film. And the idea, if, if you're trying to, if you want to show the dynamic of the Riddler, you have to actually use the Riddler, not a, you know, not the guy from Saw, who, who this who was who pretty much who this dude was at the end of the day. I'm going to come up with these little cute traps and either you either you lose a thumb or you lose your life that, you know, that type of stuff. You know, that's where, you know, that's where this was. If you want to show uh, the last, like, again, read uh, for people. If you haven't read it, read Hush. You know, that's Batman 608 to 600. Is it 608 to 619? You know, you can, back to that now, so you don't have to worry. Like, just, but look, just you can read the now. issues, which I always recommend, or you can get the trade paperback, read it online. But if you read that, you get a really cool dynamic of what the Riddler brings to the table. This is very generic at the end of the day. It's And it's safe. You don't have to go the comic book route. You don't have to, you know, these guys don't have to be over the top flashy. And that's one of the reasons why the Riddler stayed for such a long time as a prominent Batman villain because it was being directed at kids and they were invited to try to solve the riddles. And who's the guy who always solved the riddles for the most part in the comics and on the TV show? It was Robin, the kid. You know, he was the guy who realized, hey, Batman, no, when he says fuzz, he's talking about the cops, stuff like that. So if you want to bring the, if you really want to, the, the Joker's a homicidal maniac, okay? The Riddler is a guy who's a criminal with the condition that says, look, I can't, and this was part of it. He couldn't commit the crimes without giving Batman at least a heads up. He had this psychological thing going on. And that was something that, that's something that you could definitely play up, but they decided, no, 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 we're not going to go with that. And that was a staple of the character, at least in the Bronze Age. So he always had like literally one foot in the clink, even though he had all of this intellect going for him. And then later on, modern age, he was almost like a consultant or, you know, like a private eye at the end of the day. I'm not sure how far they went with that. But if you want to show the, if you want to show why this character is so cool and how different he is than the Joker, then just remember that there's a clear difference between a homicidal maniac, okay? And, you know, and a guy with the condition that makes him commit crimes that he has to tell the Batman about first before he can even do it. What about you, Petey? Um, what, between the, between the two of them, the Joker and the Riddle, trying to, I mean, ultimately we'll see what the next movie, what one well, he brings in, if it is one of the ones you said, or if it is, as you were thinking of the Joker and uh, a Riddler type of war, but it looks like they're going to be working together a little while. So, um, um, yeah, I think there's so many characters to pull in, you know, this is the thing that you could do. And ultimately, the names for us fans are easy to go to Hush or this, that, and the other. But um, they say, "Oh, do that one, do the other one." But um, you know, you you know, the thing of it is, is that what is the tried and true Joker? <laughs> you know, whether we've had a couple of Joker big, and Catwoman. You know, Joker <laughs> pops up, and we, we couldn't get out of this one without a Joker thing in there. They already got the Penguin. They got. They, there's also some. Um, They've had some uh, was it, Easter egg villains in there too, so it's just like, yo, they had a lot, of, but they didn't. The thing is that they did have some Easter egg things, but at the same time, well, I didn't really necessarily need a Joker scene in there. At the same time, it wasn't like he took away from what was going on. Like the Riddler was, the, was the key to this story. You know, Catwoman was, uh, you know almost uh, just the side character, the Batman. So she was, didn't really take too much. And then the Penguin was more, who was one of the favorites in the story was, you know, he was just the mob boss in here. And they kind of- He deserves, did. what's his name? Uh, oh, was, that, was Colin, that was Colin Farrell did that? Yes. Yeah, he killed He deserves, him. if they don't give an award just for makeup, he deserves an award for, give him something. That was, well, that was he was great. He's getting, his own, he's getting his own show on HBO Max. I hope he gets his own show and I hope he gets rewarded by the Academy for that role. That was, he was excellent. Yeah. If you hadn't told me, if I didn't know beforehand that was Colin Farrell, I would have never known who did that. Between the makeup, the acting, the voice, okay, because rarely do I even hear him break out of his uh, Irish accent at the end of the day. Even when he does an American accent, for the most part, it sounds like somebody with an Irish accent trying to do an American accent. And this, he was just spot on. He was excellent. I love that that scene. Uh, the scene Petey was telling me about. He's like, "Hey, what do you mean? 
What do you mean, La Rata? You just, what do you mean, El Rata? It's La Rata. What kind of Spanish is this? Yeah, eh, yeah. Even I can speak better Spanish than that. And they're like, uh oh. <laughs> that was a that was a key. I mean, to have such such a, a a moment where it's like we're gonna beat this out of them, and then the scene turns, and that's what you really want as a filmmaker, to, to, where the movie starts to feel like you're in the you're in a real life situation where you're not just feeding the audience information. You're feeding them that, but you didn't know how you got to it. And then they twisted, I think, again, when we got to the end of the big reveal towards the end and real what the what the actual plot was. And it's kind of staring at us, even though you know, something and staring at the the heroes at the same time too. But um yeah, that's one of the things of this is having this thing, especially at the end the big sort of end in this sort of thing where Batman gets to get some visuals that we hadn't seen him in there. Him helping people like him, like the, the you know, the, obviously the big fight, him having the, you know, <laughs> to bring himself back to life. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to kill this person where he really shows his heavy emotion for that, where it was more her. And now it's showing that him, but then they're like, well, do we have to kill the Batman now? All right, no, no. But then he goes to help. And we have the was it the new mayor in there, and um, the kid comes first, and then later when the helicopter and the kid, and that's where I got emotional, where the kid touches Batman's armor, and it's just like that's the thing that you want to get out of these things, which is hard because we've seen a lot of deaths in these things and uh, in these superhero movies, and they don't always get me, but I think like this that moment maybe in Batman Begins when they showed um, Bruce Wayne as a kid. And I know that scene, I've seen it three million times. I don't think I've, you know, as a kid, I don't think I've um, necessarily cried seeing the origin, but seeing it there in the Batman Begins, seeing them touch, like you really want to try to get the emotion out of these characters so you can really connect. And I think that's what, what the power of doing these solo movies and saying we can focus on Batman and just say, even though they had a bunch of villains in there, they had a bunch of characters. I think trying to do a movie is always cool. And that's what you want to get to. And seeing some of the other stuff that DC's kind of doing, where you have these things which have these different sort of looks and feels, it's like, you know, I mean, I compare and contrast is kind of tough. It's just me wanting to say, you know what? What if, Shao, what if, what's, what if uh, well, Shang-Chi was just a freaking mood film? Like just him going to things and fighting stuff, coming into rooms with the with the wide locales. You see the nice locale of him walking into the, the man alone with like this the, the real kung fu type stuff, but real. Oh, you mean what if it was an actual kung fu movie instead of what we got? Yeah, but, that would have been cool. <laughs> but saying you could you utilize these great great locales to not just say we're gonna create stuff where we can hide things like them driving in the thing like. The driving scene doesn't give us anything. We need visuals of this character fighting some cool stuff in the open, open ground. It's like, oh, this is the the betting thing. So it's kind of tough where we have these scenes where I can call out these scenes. Batman walking into the thing. It's not even action. Him walking and you don't see him. You see the reaction of people while he walks in. And it's just like, that's the thing of what I want, would feel if I'm standing around there and I see Batman and then, or my parents would something happen to my parents and Batman's in the room with me. And Batman is still makes the connection with the kid with even without even um talking to him. Like he has that moment. So when later they <laughs> people are reacting bad to the Batman, he knows the Batman's a good guy. He's like, hey, no, the Batman's not bad, but he can he can help us out of here. And gave us a cool Batman in the water with the light. It gives and Batman, you don't see the regular colors, obviously the red hue on him. This sort of a move, that's something that you really want at these characters. Because they got these cool outfits on. You want to have something that makes it really look and really pop there. So you're really like, wow, that's that's cool. And that's that's what I really got out of this thing. So yeah, I was wasn't expecting to enjoy it at all. I was expecting to, you know, you know, emo bat, that sort of thing, whatever they were gonna say. But I was just like, wow, we're sitting in there and I'm not, you know, I'm not losing it yet. I, I obviously I did react to the Martha thing, but otherwise. I enjoyed it, you know? So I want to just, just circle back to the Penguin stuff in terms of, um, do you think that Gotham played um, a big thing with the Penguin and that we may see the Penguin rise to the new movie in, in, in his new film? Because I mean, here he was pretty prominent as a, as a secondary character, the secondary, I guess, mob play. But then you have the, uh, the guy who played him in Gotham, um, I think his name is Taylor. 
um, and how he rose to be like the. Oh the, the, yeah, okay. Uh, you going to the Gotham know. show? You're not going to. You're saying he has to kill, kill Fish Mooney, and then then join into the what's the name? Well, we see the, we, the mob boss Falcone is taken out, right? So now he's going to have to rise, right? I'm yeah. just saying, that, is it that now they're trying to make again? One of the thing Matt Reeves seems to be doing is is bringing on other characters to be a little bit more prominent. There's a constant dynamic of always. Um, Joker, 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 you know. Yeah, but they had the Joker in this movie. Mm -hmm. yeah, but so slight, and I hope they, I hope that they keep it to that. To that. Slight or not, movie. he was still there. Yeah, I know. People like, who want to have the Joker no matter what, right? That's what they like. So hey, that's, else? that's you director know? greed. Like I said, that's director greed. These guys, can, oh, look, I'm going to make this film. I'm using one villain. I might use Catwoman as an anti-hero and it's going to be Batman. Okay, no, 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 no. Who does Batman? Oh, maybe we can get the Joker in here. Wouldn't that be great? And they can't resist. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, give the, that that was ultimately the teaser for the fans at the end, where it's being like, hey, here's the Joker here at the end and we'll see them working together, that sort of thing, which, it's hard to, I mean, I guess you can do, try to do the thing where you have the villain team up, but then it turns into you liking one over the other. You know, they don't, they couldn't manage the time for Tommy Lee Jones. And um, if you'd had Tommy Lee Jones by himself in Batman Forever, I'm not sure if it would have made it. It would have um, kind of turned into the everybody, chew, <laughs> the Ice Age. <laughs> Right. I mean, overall, we, we like the film. I mean, there was. I, I'm sorry I said anything bad about Batman and Robin. I know that's your favorite film, but um, I'm it sorry is. I made jokes about that. So, I mean, I'm that, sorry you didn't. I'm sorry you didn't tell me that was his favorite film sooner. <laughs> it was a bad film, but hey, um, thank you everyone for listening. If you like what you hear, please comment, subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up. Spin a wrap. Out. Out.